Hi guys, Gabi from Repath Hacks here. Background processes became a thing in Repath with the new orchestrator features of the 2020 version that allow multiple background processes to run in parallel on the same machine at the same time. That could potentially be a considerable runtime saving, so it is definitely worth investigating them. But what I was not aware at first was how much this is affected by the licensing model. Stay tuned to find out how. A background process is one that does not require user interface interaction. So there should be no clicks or type in tools in the background process. In fact, to stay away from temptation, the UiPath UI automation dot activities package dependency should not even be added to a background process automation. There is a standard template for a background process in UiPath Studio. So let's open it and investigate it a bit. We give it a name. and create it. And I also made a video on how to convert the standard UiPath framework to a background framework as well. You can see the link to the video in the description below as well as a link at the top right corner of the video as a card. So be sure to check that out. I believe any production ready processes should be wrapped in a framework to benefit from exception handling and logging. So a background framework makes sense to me. So let's have a look now at the dependencies. We see the Excel, the mail, the system activities, and the web API activities. And as expected, we don't see here the UI automation dependency anymore because uh, we shouldn't use it. And if we have a look at the project settings, we can do that by right clicking on the project name and select project settings. We see that the start in background option is set on yes. And this is just to basically inform orchestrator that it is allowed to run this process in background at the same time with another background or foreground process. So we have this option here starts in background in the project settings and if we open actually uh, the files of this process and we open the project JSON we will see here that requires user interaction is set on false. So this is basically being set after we've set the project settings to a running background. And this is what is telling uh, Orchestrator to treat this as a background process rather than as a front-end one. Okay, so this is what makes a process a background one. Now let's witness them run in parallel. I've created two very simple processes. One is a UI process and this basically is a, is a front-end one. It opens Notepad it types a text into Notepad, waits for a few seconds so we can uh, actually witness the process run and then closes Notepad. And I have as well a background process created, my background process 2, and this only has a delay for 30 seconds to have time to see the process run and then just logs a message. Yeah? And the idea would be to see these run in parallel. Let's run them from Orchestrator first. All right, so here are the processes. We will start the front-end process first, let it run, and then start the background process in parallel and see if it waits in pending mode or if it starts while the first process is still running. So let's do that. Let's run the front-end process and then the background one. There's the front-end process and the background one. We start it and we see what's happening here. The front-end process is running while the background one is waiting. This is the delay of 30 seconds. The first process, this is finished. And now, only now, the background process started running. So it didn't run in parallel, actually. So we finish in 30 seconds. All right, so that didn't work as expected. Maybe let's have a look at the assistant. We have here the two processes. The background one is still running. We can wait for it to finish. Right, now let's do the same thing. Let's run the front end process and then the background process too from the assistant. 
So the first one started, we run the second one, and we see that both are running in parallel actually right now. And as soon as the first one will finish, a few seconds after, the second one will finish as well, because the second process doesn't wait for the first one to finish. So the first one is done, and the second process should finish in a few seconds. All right, so this is quite strange. We have been running the same two processes, just with a different trigger method, and they behave differently. Why is that? Well, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe we get a hint with this following note in the UiPath documentation. The background process automation is only available for attended robots. When using an attended robot to run multiple processes at the same time, each running process consumes a separate license. So there is a distinction between attended and unattended robots, of course. And if we scroll down and continue reading, for attended robots, the background process automation with attended robots rely on the user's session on the machine to run automations. These are started from Studio or UiPath Assistant and run the same Windows session as the user. So apparently when we trigger it from the UiPath Assistant, we are in the scenario of an attended robot. And in this scenario, background processes will run in parallel. While if we trigger it from orchestrator, if I go to a tenant on my robot, my robot is of the type unattended. So for unattended scenario, this needs to consume a separate license and basically will not run in parallel on the same robot. So I believe this is the explanation. And also what is involved here, if we go to the background process uh, help, we have here a, a note, which is also hinting in this direction. Please note that the background process runs in session zero when started from orchestrator on an unattended robot. And what is this session zero? I had no idea, so I googled it. And I found a very good explanation here, I guess. Um, so apparently in the Windows XP, uh, and earlier versions of the Windows operating systems, all services ran in the same session as the first user who logs on the console. And this was called session zero. And running services and users' applications together in session zero poses a security risk because services run at elevated privileges, so more rights, and therefore are targets for possible malicious agents who are looking for means to elevate their own privileges. And as of Windows Vista and the newer versions, this security risk is uh, mitigated by isolating the services in session zero and making session zero non-interactive. So there is no way to have user interaction in session zero since uh, we Microsoft Vista. And this means that services never run in the same session as users' applications and therefore are protected from attacks that originate in possible application code. So that's explanation, that's what session zero is and the reason why it's separated from the normal user session. And basically that's explanation why triggering the same two processes from assistant will allow them to run in parallel as long as one of them at least is a background process, while doing the same from orchestrator, if you have an unattended robot installed, will not run in parallel because of this limitation of the robot type. And that was it for the background processes. We have seen what defines the background process, what preconditions it should meet, as well as how it should be triggered in order to really run in background and in parallel. I hope this was useful and I hope it will save you some frustration maybe if you try to run some background processes in parallel on unattended robots and wonder why it doesn't work. If you want to support the channel, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to be informed of upcoming new videos. Thank you for watching and have a great day.